What's up everyone, it's Joshua here again doing a Star Trek updated Star Trek ranking of the films from the worst one to the best one. Now, I am going to be a little quiet here, so try to bear with me. So, this is my personal ranking from worst to best. You're not going to agree with some of the choices I made, but... I would like to hear how you rank this series. So, without further ado, I like to get started. So, coming at number 13, we have Star Trek V The Final Frontier. Not only this is the worst Star Trek movie, I also feel like that this is just an attempt to rush this entire film. William Shatner as director, that's not a bad thing. But the problem is the script, the inconsistencies, and just some of the lifeless dialogue that these characters have to speak. And this is William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, Nichelle Nichols, and all of the original cast of the original Star Trek series speaking this dialogue, as well as our actor playing the villain. I see some people defending it, and that's fine if they like it, but Star Trek V is just no. I just do not like this one. It is just a rushed, sad attempt at a fifth Star Trek movie. And it should have been better. Avoid at all costs. Number 12 is Star Trek The Motion Picture. This is the first in the Star Trek movie series and the reason why this is so low is because I do have to agree with the criticism that this is very slow paced and there's not a lot going on and also some of the shots in this movie takes forever to get going but I do like being reintroduced to the characters I do like the story I do like the effects and I do like the soundtrack and the cinematography and the performances of William Shatner Persis Kambada and everyone else and that's what saves it from being even worse on the list because despite the fact that it's so boring and so slow at times at number 11 is Star Trek Generations now Star Trek Generations now this one was kind of interesting you have William Shatner in here. Yes, I agree. You should not have killed him off. But it's more of a passing to the torch with this one. Now, I know some people say the next generation movies are not good. I disagree. This one is kind. This one is a hit and miss for me. There are parts I like, such as the effects and the acting and the action the set pieces and the production design. And Malcolm McDowell's performance as the villain. But every but there are things I don't like as well. And I felt like the things I don't like could have been fixed in a lot of areas. I'm not saying Star Trek Generations is bad like everyone else is. I'm just saying it could have been a little better for the first film with the new Star Trek cast. Which in case the next generation cast to be that. At number 10 is Star Trek 3 The Search for Spock. Now, The Search for Spock was quite entertaining movie. I like that it's picking up from Giraffe Khan. We don't see Spock at the end of here, but I really do like Leonard Nimoy's direction. I like the, how he approached the story. I like the villain. The villain is not as good as Khan from Wrath of Khan, but I have to say he's a very serviceable and pretty interesting villain. Christopher Lloyd does a great job here. The original cast does a good job here, and just it's a lot of fun to be had here. It's definitely not as good as Wrath of Khan, and it's definitely not as good as the 2009 film. But I have to say, in his own terms, it's pretty good. And The Search for Spock is a, is a pretty underrated, even number film in the original Star Trek movie series. So, 
there you have it with such a spot number nine is star trek nemesis everybody just hates on this movie you got tom hardy he's great he's gonna be the saving grace of venom because that movie is honestly going to suck um nemesis i find it underrated yes there are some things that it doesn't fully resolve there are some problems with the movie but star trek nemesis for the most part i thought it was a decent end to the next generation saga it could have been a better ending though but i have to say that they did the best they could with this and you could have done better but for a film with the next generation cast you could have done a lot worse sir. and it's just not that bad I've pretty much defended Star Trek Nemesis while also giving my problems with it. It's underrated. Number 8 is Star Trek 4 The Voyage Home. Some people call this, yeah, they say, I like this one. I like the campiness of it. They go, instead of them going to space, they have to stop the villain, this time in the city. And I like that. It makes some great humor. Made some good, awesome stuff going on. And this is one is kind of a little odd. And it's a little odd because the decision that they decided to go with them going into the city. But I like it. It's different. It was something unexpected. And I and it's just quite, I thought that was quite a pretty interesting direction for them to go. And yeah, the Voyage Home is just... Pretty entertaining. The po the cast and the chemistry that they have with these actors have with each other. I just really like what they brought in, and just it's a lot of fun to be had with Star Trek: The Voyage Home. Again, not as good as Wrath of Khan, not as good as some of the really good ones in this franchise, but again, this is quite a entertaining ride, and. I respect the movie for doing that. And Star Trek IV Voyage Home, the score is also pretty good and I like the effects and Larry Nimoy once again did a good job with the direction. And <laughs> this is just, I would say my favorite part of this but I just honestly, there's just I can't really tell you my favorite part because there's a lot of funny stuff in this one. Now at number 7 we have Star Trek Insurrection. I know, I know, there are people who just do not like this one, but Jonathan Franks, Franks did a really good job. Once again, People say it is the worst one of the two he's directed, but I disagree. I thought he really did a good job here. I like F. Murray Abraham as the villain. I like the little story. I like they gave Carl love interest. Patrick Stewart is awesome in here. Brent Spiner is Data. It's really cool. Gates McFadden, Marina Sirtis. I just, I like the, the new generation characters. As much as I do the original characters. Yeah, some of the effects are a little dated, but it was 1998, so you have to at least give the, the official effects team credit for what they was able to accomplish. And just... And, yeah, again, not as good as First Contact, but is it is it a bad movie? No. It just has a couple of things you could either fix... Or improve or honestly taken out but for the most part I have to say Star Trek Insurrection is a pretty good film in the next generation series that's my honest opinion and I'm sticking to it number six is Star Trek the undiscovered country now this was the send-off for our original series cast and I have to say it was a pretty satisfying send-off 
everything was great in here. The acting, the story, the the premise, the effects, just and you got the guy from Rafa Khan, Nicholas Mayer, to come back and direct, and he just rocked it here. And I just have to say that he did a really good job. And I thought that with all of the great things in it, this was a very satisfactory thing. And she, uh, I'm sorry, and it was just, wow, just, you know, yeah. It's a pretty entertaining film. The Undiscovered Country just has a lot of fun things in it, and this is a great send-off for our original cast of characters, for Kirk, Spock, Uhura, Bones, Shekhov, just, and also, just really great effects in this movie, and a really great story, a fantastic way to wrap up the original series, Legacy of Films, <laughs> yeah, that's number six. So I checked the Undiscovered Country for you guys. Coming to number five is Star Trek First Contact, which some people say the only good one. I disagree. I like all four of the Next Generation ones. This is easily the best one. I will say that. I will say that. But we have some amazing things. I love the Borg. I love this. Love the premise with it. Picard and his crew having to stop the Borg. It's basically a continuation of Best of Both Worlds. Parts 1 and 2. If you can really say that. Great acting. Great effects all around. Jonathan Frakes did a really great job directing. And playing a great a good performance as Riker. Just. First contact. Entertaining premise. Entertaining movie awesome film in the next generation series and it's easily my favorite one so yeah and number four is star trek beyond this is the recent one that came out in 2016 and it's the 13th film and it was released on a good time of the anniversary the only problem is that this movie did not get do as well as it should have. But I like the villain Idris Elba. I like the story. I like the action. I like Justin Lin's direction. I like the score. I love the little tie-in at the end of the movie. And by the way, rest in peace, Larry Nimoy and Anton Yelchin. Your legacy lives on through these movies. Um, um. Jayla, played by, um, oh yeah, I, I know her name. Jayla's played by the actress Sophia Botella. Um, she was really great. I liked her character. Um, she, she was a badass, and she was pretty hot for an alien. And so, and just the, the action, and just... This was fun, this is awesome, and I thought it was really entertaining. And the song by Slet, Rihanna, Sledgehammer, is a really cool song. So, Star Trek Beyond is the underrated child in this one. In this new series of films, I can't wait for Star Trek 14. So, Number three is Star Trek Into Darkness. A lot of people don't like this movie because it has references to Rafa Khan. Um, you people do the same exact thing with Star Wars, with Force Awakens and Last Jedi. But yet, when it comes to Star Trek, you guys even have to have a heart attack. No, this it does do the Rafa Khan thing at the light end of the movie. I will admit that. I do like. I didn't mind it. Um, I like Band of Cumberbatch as the villain. I like the story here. 
I like how this movie starts. Just everything in this movie I thought was really good. Alice Eve. I liked Harris Girl Marcus. She's not in Beyond, so I'm fine with the explanation that there's n the the fact that there's no Car Carol Marcus disappearance explanation in Star Trek Beyond. Because I know there are people out there who didn't like Alice Eve's portrayal of Carol Marcus, and you gotta take their feelings into account for people who liked Alice Eve. Into Darkness is just quite pretty entertaining for the sequel to 2009 Star Trek, and it is awesome. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here with number two. Number two, we have Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Ricardo Montalban as Khan is awesome. And this is an improvement over the motion picture. There's a lot going on. It's, there's more action. There's some fun, entertaining parts here. And then just you um have a really entertaining stuff that really does hit home. And I like it. I like Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan. It's just a lot of fun and a lot of entertaining spots in a lot of areas and the sacrifice of Spock at the end. You can't watch this movie and not tear up because Kirk and Spock, these are best friends you've seen and seeing that, that was pretty good sad. Pretty freaking sad. But the Wrath of Khan did everything of Star Trek to need to do which this brings me into my number one favorite star trek movie i'm gonna get some controversy for this because this is the movie that literally made me a star trek fan star trek 2009 people if it was not for this movie i would have not seen into darkness or star trek beyond or watched the original series or the next generation if it wasn't for this I would never became a Star Trek geek. I don't watch all, all the shows, but I do watch the movies, and I do like the movies. And this is a pretty cool prequel. J.J. Abrams did a great job here. I like his work in Mission Impossible 3. I like his work in Force Awakens, you people. That's fine if you don't. But this is a pretty awesome prequel. Reboots that takes place in an alternate timeline. I like the villain Nero by Eric Bana. I like the conflict between Spock and Kirk before they actually become friends, and just there's a lot of greatness in this movie. There's a lot of Michael G. Chino's score, the effects, and just Zoe Zaldana as Uhura. I just really like Star Trek 2009, and it was quite a blast when I first saw it on TV. I'm glad I saw this. I'm glad I decided to watch the other movies because I wanted to get into another sci-fi movie series besides Star Wars. And if it wasn't for this, I would have never became a Star Trek fan and I definitely would not be ranking these movies. So that was my ranking of all 13 Star Trek movies from my least favorite to my favorite done in voiceover form. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this one's long, but there are 13 movies, so I couldn't make this any shorter. So let me know what you guys think of the Star Trek ranking down below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I'll see you guys in more videos. This is Future Filmmaker 3940 signing out, and you guys... Keep it cool as always. I'll see you in the next ranking.